So lesson three, torques with angles. I'm going to give you beams at angles, and you're going to have to find components. It says, suppose we have a situation as follows. The beam below has a mass of 12 kilograms and a total length of 8.5 meters. If the beam is in equilibrium, what is the tension in the rope? Okay. We would consider this a C plus B level question. In other words, we would expect most of our kids to get this. It's going to look scary. Relax. The first thing I'm going to ask myself is, am I going to use forces or torques? And there's a pretty simple answer. Is there a beam in this question? Torques. Torques. Then I'm going to very, very carefully label the forces that are acting on the beam. What are the forces acting on this beam? Get the obvious ones. What are the forces acting on this beam? Get the obvious ones. Gravity. Now, where am I going to put the mass of the beam? We talked last day about this concept of center of mass. So I'm going to put the mass of the beam right there. Which way does gravity act? What other forces are acting on this beam? Get the next obvious one. Tension. Now that can't be it. And the reason I know that can't be it is this tension in my mind is pulling upwards and to the left. Is there a force to the right on my diagram anywhere yet? So that means that this couldn't be an equilibrium. It would have to be accelerating to the left. I know there has to be a force to the right. Where? Right here. That hinge, and I'll call it Fx for horizontal, has to be pushing to the right. Has to be. Otherwise, this couldn't be an equilibrium. And not only that, I don't think tension is taking the entire mass of this beam. I suspect that because there is a contact with the floor, there is some kind of vertical normal force. I'm going to call it Fy instead of normal force, but I'm pretty sure that there must be some vertical component there. And if I tried solving this with forces by saying the sum of all my forces down equal the sum of all my forces up, this would be impossible because I have one, two, three unknown forces. I know mg I can figure out. That's another reason we have to use torques. Torque is what times what? Okay, we probably want that at our fingertips for the rest of this lesson. Torque is force times perpendicular distance. Distance from what? The pivot. That's the word we're going to use. And here's my question. How far is this force from the pivot? So how much torque will it exert? Zero. How far is this force from the pivot? Zero. So how much torque will it exert? That's why we have to use torques. We can use torques and ignore these two forces. If I had said, though, Give me a free body diagram. That's it. And I would absolutely take marks off if you didn't reason your way to saying, there's got to be two forces. There has to be. Otherwise, this couldn't be an equilibrium. But now we're going to use torques. Torque was what times what? Force times perpendicular distance. You see, I got another problem. Here's my beam. Is mg perpendicular to the beam? Nope. To the ground, but that's not my frame of reference. Is tension perpendicular to the beam? Nope. So now we're going to go components. I'm going to draw a little dotted line like that, and I'm going to call it tension perpendicular, and I'm going to draw a little line like that. I'll call it tension parallel. See the Z? See it? So, 40 degrees. 
I'm going to do the same thing with gravity. I'm going to draw a line like this, and I'm going to call it mg perpendicular. And I'm going to draw a line like this, and I'm going to call it mg parallel. And it looks like in both of these triangles, there is a 90 degree angle, there is a 90 degree angle. Oh, look up for a second and put your pencil down. I'm going to write on this diagram a whole bunch. How big? How big? How big? 90 minus 35. How big? 35. Let me do that again. Ready? Watch. How big? Fifty-five, because it adds to 180. And this is a 90 degree angle, so if that's 55, this is 35. I found a way to get that 35 from there to there. It won't always be that way, but you're going to have to, in your mind, drop this line down, form a 90 degree triangle. That'll give you that one, and that'll give you one over here. In other words, 35 degrees. So Gordon's asking a great question. He's saying, won't it always be at the same angle as the beam is on? Only if the beam is mounted on the ground. What if it's mounted on a wall? What if it's mounted on a ceiling? What if it, So the answer is, there's going to be so many different diagrams. Don't try and memorize the rule. You're going to have to kind of derive in a hopscotch and hopscotch. But the method is almost always going to be, if you have gravity, drop it straight down because it's going to be perpendicular to the ground. It'll give you a little right angle there, and you can usually use some basic triangles add to 180. Okay. What did I say we're going to use to solve this? Torques. I'm going to underline the word equilibrium because that's the trigger word here. And there's a beam, so I can say this. The sum of all the torques clockwise that's in this direction equals the sum of all the torques counterclockwise that's in that direction. And you were away last class. You want to watch the video. Trust me. I forgot to tape the video. I No, never mind. I did. Gonna, that was math. I had to use last year's video. Here's my pivot, so now we need to use our imagination. And I'm not looking at tension. I'm not looking at mg. I'm looking at the two perpendicular ones, these two guys. Which one would cause this to spin this way, clockwise? Uh, there is no mg. Okay, I'm going to yell at you in love. Perpen mg perpendicular. What do you think the most common mistake on this is? Kids just want to use that. Nope. Torque is not force times distance. It's force times perpendicular distance. So it's going to be mg perpendicular. And then the second most common mistake is kids forget to multiply by the distance. What's its distance from the pivot? Well, let's see. If I look in the original instructions, how long is the beam grand total? And where am I going to put the mass of the beam? Dead center. Four point two five. Are there any other clockwise forces? Nope. Equals. What forces would cause this to rotate counterclockwise if it could? Don't say tension. Tension perpendicular times its distance from the pivot. Eight. Okay, you see how I can put all that together? Because it says the whole thing is 8.5 long and there's 0.5 on the end. Eight. What am I being asked to find? Tension. I'm going to get tension perpendicular by itself and then I'll do the trig to figure out tension. Uh, Mg perpendicular. I'm going to pick this triangle up and just draw it over here. So here's mg that I know. This is the one that I want. 
where this is 35 degrees, which trig function could I use to figure out mg perpendicular? Oh, math 12 degrees, please, by the way. Sorry? Cosine. I think I would say cosine of 35 equals the perpendicular over mg. By the way, I know the m's cancel here, but I don't want to do that because I want mg perpendicular. How would I get mg perpendicular by itself? Okay, the mg, Kieran, would move up to there. So I think what I can say is this. mg cos 35 times 4.25. Is that okay, Megan? Uh, equals tension perpendicular. And you know what? I'm going to divide by 8 to get the perpendicular by itself. Do I know M? Check. Do I know G? Oh, calculator time now. Make sure your degrees. M G, uh, uh, what was M? 12? 12 times 9.8 cos 35 times 4.25 divided by 8. Uh, do you get 51.1765 blah blah blah? Okay, so tension perpendicular equals 51. Point one seven six five blah 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 it's not what I want to find what do I want to find tension I'm gonna redraw the triangle with tension this little guy here so that one looks like this perpendicular parallel I don't care about but there's tension with this angle here was 40 degree yes it was which trig function can I use here? Sine. Sine of 40 equals perpendicular over tension. How would I get the tension by itself? Yeah, stuff moves diagonally. T is going to be up there. Sine is going to end up down there. Tension is going to be perpendicular divided by the sine of 40. Which I still have on my calculator. Divided by the sine of 40. So if you were designing this, if this was a construction thing, you would have to make sure that your rope could handle at least 79.6 newtons. And of course, you'd build a huge safety margin in There's the tension. Okay. That's what we're going to be looking at today. We're going to be taking torques, beams, and either the beams will be slanted or the forces will be slanted or both. Now, there's two approaches you can take, Sally. You can find the perpendicular component of the forces, which I find easier. Some teachers will teach you, instead of taking the perpendicular component of the force, take the perpendicular component of the distance. There are a few obscure questions where that actually works better, but not really in Physics 12. So I'm going to kind of gloss over that approach. I'm going to say, find the component of the force. So there are two main types of beam problems. One where the beam is nice, although can you see, you'd still have to find the perpendicular component of tension, but gravity and a mass hanging on the end with another gravity are perpendicular already. I would consider that C plus level. I like this question, I like this question, I like this question. It's going to be one of those on your test. And then where the beam is also at an angle. So you would have mg down, find a component. The mass of whatever's hanging on the end down, find a component. 
tension find a component and again i can't give you a generic here's where you find the angle all the time reproach forces we always could draw remember the ramps we could always draw the diagrams identical because the ramps are always on the ground here not so much like so to solve the beam problems we're going to apply the two conditions for equilibrium the sum of all the torques are zero except i always write the sum of the torques clockwise equals the sum of the torques counterclockwise and the sum of all the forces is zero, although I'll usually write all the forces up equal all the forces down, all the forces left equal all the forces right. That's what I did here, Sally, when I was able to figure out there had to be, the hinge had to be pushing to the right. Otherwise, nothing's canceling out. If I wanted to, I could find the horizontal component of tension now. Nothing's canceling that out. In fact, if I wanted to, I could find the dead vertical component of tension and figure out how much gravity was pulling down and how much this Fy had to be. Okay? Components, components, components. Example two. Find the cord tension and find the hinge force exerted by the hinge on the beam. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label my forces on this diagram. What are the forces acting? Get the obvious ones. Uh, which one? Because there's two. Which one? There's two masses in this question. What are the two masses? Mass of the beam and the hanging thing. So I'm going to go like this. Um, well, this says beam. This says load. So how about MBG? And how about M, L, G? And I'll do a capital L so it doesn't look like a 1 because a lowercase l looks like a 1. Are those perpendicular to the beam? Are they perpendicular to the beam? Ah, less work. What other forces are acting on this? Get the obvious ones. Okay, so I have tension. Which way is tension pulling? In which two directions? Up and to the left. This can't be an equilibrium if that's it then. It is possible that the up could be canceling out both gravities, but it's also pulling to the left. This would have to be plowing through the wall. That's Newton's laws, right? I have an unbalanced force. Oh, so I know there has to be... I'll call it an FX right there, pushing that way. And Sally, although it's possible that this cord, if I find the vertical component, is actually canceling out both of those, I doubt it. I also suspect there's an FY right there. Which means, just like my previous diagram, Jordan, there's three unknown forces, tension, Fy, and Fx. Is there a beam in this question? Torques. And you know where I'm going to put my pivot? Where I cancel out two of the forces. Because if I put my pivot where it's drawn, and they won't always draw one for you, you'll have to think a little bit, um, two of my torques vanish. Because torque is force times perpendicular distance. How far is this force from the pivot? Zero. How far is this force from the pivot? Zero. So I think the only addition I'm going to do is the component of this guy. Now let's change colors. Here's tension perpendicular. Here's tension parallel. Look horizontally. What can you tell me about the two horizontal forces? How are Fx and tension parallel related? More specific than what must their magnitudes be? Same. You know how I'm going to find Fx? I'm not. You know how I'm going to find Fx? I'm going to find tension. And once I find tension, I should be able to find the parallel component from the triangle. Okay. So I'm going to start out finding tension. Torques. Are we in equilibrium? 
seems to be, doesn't say it's rotating. So the sum of all the torques clockwise that's in that direction equals the sum of all the torques counterclockwise in that direction. Which force or forces would be causing it to rotate this way? So I can't hear. When I go like this and you say the same volume, it doesn't help. Sally, what'd you say? Okay, this one. MLG. Now that's the force that we're doing torques. So times its distance from the pivot. How far is it from the pivot? Yes, you'll need to look at the diagram and read the instructions. They won't always blatantly give you the distance. You might have to go hunting for it. How long is the pivot? So how, how, how far is it from the pivot? Okay, I thought you said 0 0.2. 0 0.82, you said? I agree. Are there any other clockwise torques? Oh, the mass of the beam times G. Times what? Its distance from the pivot. How far? Center of mass. Are there any other clockwise forces? Nope. Did I say forces? Torques, I should have said. All right. What are my counterclockwise torques? Tension perpendicular times its distance from the pivot, 0.82. Do I need to do any components here? Then just to, because this is a lot of writing, look up. Can I do that on the same line, even though it's my first line of writing? Let's get the tension perpendicular by itself. It's a lot of writing. And you're going to find, by the way, in terms of writing, like amount, similar to the momentum at angle questions, but I think you'll find the math is easier. It's so trick. So the arithmetic component, nowhere near as bad. Um, let's plug in numbers. Mass of the load, 0.7 times 9.8 times 0.82 plus mass of the beam 0.22 times 9.8 times 0.41 all divided by 0.82 that equals tension perpendicular What is tension perpendicular, please? At flip top and brackets. 7.928? 7 7.938? Anybody else? Yep. 7.938. And I'll, you know, I'll carry it on my calculator, or if I can't, I'll write down a few extra sig figs. 7.938 what? Sorry? Exactly 7.938? Oh, wow. Newtons. Now let's find tension. Oh. Dylan, see the Z? Where's the 30 going to go? Top left. So let's do that. 30. Often for a complicated diagram, especially one where the beam is on an angle, I would redraw this triangle because I've made so many dumb mistakes along the way. Since this is a nice big diagram and it's horizontal, I think I'm just going to go 7.938. And I'm going to say, hey, which trig? I think I can get it from this triangle here without redrawing it. Which trig function will I use to find tension? Sign. Now again, it's not always consistent. I think you'll notice last time, what did we use to find mg cos? 
uh, what here we use sine for tension. It's not always going to be consistent, which is why, unlike in forces, when we kind of did a lot of the trig in our head and went straight to the answer, I'll redraw the triangle or do the trig. Uh, so if I hear you correctly, it's going to be sine 30 equals perpendicular over tension. Tension is going to be perpendicular divided by the sine of 30. Uh, you get 14.8, uh, what's 38 times 2, Mr. Duick? 7.6, do you get 14.876 or am I wrong? Sorry? 15.8, 15.8, yes, 15.876. Who's in math 12? Who's done special triangle lesson? Sine of 30 is 0.5, I remember that from my lesson. Block H hasn't had it yet. Uh, so what was it? 15 point what? 876. Now, since tension is one of the answers, now I'll sig fig this one, and I'll go 15.9 newtons, and I'll put a box around it. But now I'll also answer the next part. So they wanted tension. What else did they want? Hinge force. Okay. Look up. Look at your vertical forces. On my diagram... Can you find the two vertical forces? Pointing upwards. Yep. Can you find the two downwards forces? Are they all nice and in the same direction, like all vertical? I can now go to forces. I can now say the sum of all of my upwards forces has to equal the sum of all of my downwards forces. Oh, and I'm also going to say the force to the left equals the force to the right. Why didn't you put a sum up there? Because I noticed in my diagram there's only one force and one force, so I didn't feel like wasting my time writing the sum of when it's not a sum. Uh, so down, if I hear you correctly, is m beam g plus m l g and up is tension perpendicular plus f y so can i find f y yep how much more room have i got good f y is going to be the mass of the beam uh 0.22 times 9.8 plus mass of the load 0.7 times 9.8 minus tension perpendicular, uh, uh, 7.938. What's the vertical component of the force that that hinge is putting out? What do you get? So it is putting out a force. In other words, the cable is not supporting all of the mass, taking care of all of gravity. What was it? 1.078? 1. 1. And I'll carry extra sig figs. It's not my final answer. And let's see if we can figure out, um, oh, forces left equals forces right. I think what we're saying is forces to the, oh, get your lefts and rights correct, Mr. Dewitt. I think what we're saying here is tension perpendicular equals fx. No, not tension perpendicular, Mr. Duck. Tension parallel. This is why it helps to have the diagram in front of you. Let me scroll. Yeah, tension parallel equals fx. Hey, how can I figure out how big tension parallel is? Now, I could use cosine. If I do that, I'd use tension. And I'd be a little worried because I used this to find tension in case I got this wrong I might actually choose to use tangent to hedge my bets although I've done so much math each of these is a calculated value you said cosine let's go cosine then uh, over here I would write cosine of 30 equals parallel over tension How would I get tension parallel by itself? 
Okay, and I'm going to stick that over here. Fx, the horizontal component on the hinge, is going to be tension cos 30. And tension was, and I'm going to use the 15.876 if I can. 15.87, point, Mr. Dude, point. 876 cos 30 13.749 so if i hear you correctly this is what i think we're saying on that hinge We're 1.078 up and plus tip to tail. We are 13.749 to the right. You know what I want, Dylan? The resultant. That's the overall magnitude and direction force on the hinge. This is force hinge. Do you see what I meant when I said these are long, like the momentum ones, but the arithmetic isn't too bad, because this is going to be Pythagoras and Sokotoa. Not sign law, not coast law, but holy smokes, we have done a chunk of writing here. Yep. I like this question. I like this question. Um, let's do Pythagoras first of all. So force on the hinge equals this squared plus 1.078 squared square root. Oh, let's try that again. You get 13.8 or not? 190.8. One nine seven six square root of that. Yeah, thirteen point eight Newtons at uh, theta. Which trig function? Tan. Theta is going to be the inverse tan of opposite over adjacent. Eighty five point five eighty six degrees. In other words, this thing is almost level, but not quite. This force is almost straight out, but not quite. Uh, I'll go eighty five point five degrees. Um, how will I write the direction component? I can't really say east of north. Because this is, we're looking straight on to a diagram, not from above. Yeah. Am I wrong? Oh, yeah. I'm going to even say that I would accept that. I'm just going to 85.5 degrees with the wall. Is that clear? 85.5 degrees with the wall. Like that. Forks. Tricky? Yeah. Uh, very handy, though, because you can put the pivot wherever you want to. You put it where you don't know several forces, and they offer no torque. So very useful for solving and doing, uh, doing questions. 
when the beam is not horizontal, the problem becomes more complex. Since we often need to consider one set of components for the torque equation and a different set of components for the force equations. <coughs> it says find the cord tension and find the hinge force. <sighs> Put your pencils down, don't write this down, look up. You see, to find the hinge force, once I had written the perpendicular component, the perpendicular component, uh, the perpendicular component, once I got all those, I would have to erase all of this and instead find this component and this component, which are not perpendicular to the beam. This component is straight down. This component is straight down, so I'm okay with that. But I'd have to redo this question. I'm not going to give you a question where the beam is at an angle and the cord is at an angle and I want you to find the hinge force. I will, however, say find tension. And that's what we're going to do. Tension to me here, fair game. Find the hinge force here, overkill. I could do it, oh, for Pete's sakes. So, let's label our, oh, beam, torques. Let's label our forces, get the obvious ones. Ah, good old MG. Uh, so I'm going to have mass of the beam G down. And I encourage that you write it on the left of your arrow, because you're going to be doing a triangle on the right of your arrow, and it's going to get in the way otherwise. And I have mass of the load times G. Straight down. Which means even before I go anywhere else, I know component, chunk, chunk, component, chunk. I'll do that later. What else? Obvious force. Tension. Which way is tension pulling? Which ways is tension pulling? Up and left. Since it's pulling to the left, I definitely know that right by the hinge there, it has to be pushing to the right. Otherwise, it couldn't be in equilibrium, Jordan. I got an unbalanced force. Looking at this sharp angle, do you think the upwards part is canceling out both of those? I doubt it. I also think there's an upwards component right there, too. Those are the forces on this diagram. Who cares? Well, if I asked you to do a free body diagram, I would care. But did this question specifically say, draw the free body diagram? Well, then, I could have left those off because if I'm solving this with torques, how much torque will they exert? Nothing. Why? Because torque is force times perpendicular distance. This guy isn't, well, this, they're not perpendicular to begin with. I'd have to find components. But besides, their distance is zero, so who cares? All right. We're going to want the perpendicular component of this guy. Tension perpendicular. There's 90. Where's the 55 going to go? Here, top, or here, bottom? Top, see the Z? Hopefully you're developing an appreciation for the geometry that you learned last year and how handy it is in physics 12. Um, here, I'm going to go -na 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 -na, like that, and -na 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 -na, like that, where here is ML perpendicular G, and here is M beam perpendicular G. Ready, Ryan? Watch. Look up. See the 90 right there? You've got to extend the line in your mind. Use your sesame through imagination. How big? How big? 90 minus 28. How big? Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Is that okay? Will it always be like that? Well, no, but sometimes, most of the time. That's the most common one. So, that's 28 degrees. And once I have it in this triangle, 
I'm pretty sure that's 28 as well because both masses were hanging in the same direction to begin with. Solved. Torques. The sum of all the torques clockwise in that direction equals the sum of all the torques counterclockwise in that direction. Using my imagination, if this thing could rotate, what would cause it to rotate around the pivot in this direction? Sorry? No, I gotta be fussy. Not MLG. Perpendicular, 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 right? This guy, not that guy, this guy. So, MLG perpendicular times its distance from the pivot. Plus, I think there's another counter, uh, so another clockwise torque. MBG perpendicular times its distance from the pivot. Seven or mass. I think that's all the clockwise torques. Counterclockwise. Tension perpendicular times what? Its distance from the pivot, which is 5.9. I'm going to do zoom this right away. All right. Let's redraw one of these triangles here, and it'll be the same trig function for the other one, because can you see these two triangles are pretty near identical? So let's over here in the margin. There's MG. There's MBG uh, perpendicular. And this angle here was 28 degrees. Which trig function? Cos? So I think it's going to look like this. The mass of the load times g times the cosine of 28. So we're talking about common mistakes. Third most common mistake. Ryan, we're so proud. We found the trig function. We forget to drop the 7 down. The number of times I see kids forget to drop the distance down is stunning. Because they were so big in the trig. Plus, mass of the beam times g times also cos 28 times, don't forget to drop the distance down, all divided by 5.9. That's the perpendicular component of the tension. Go to it! What do you get for tension perpendicular? What do you get? Because I, th I think you have all the masses in your diagram that you need, right? They're there somewhere. Fourteen point six. Anyone else? Uh oh. What did you get? One hundred and sixty-four. Anybody else? Hmm. Oh, we suspected that a while ago, Justin. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Ready? Mass, oh, brackets, because there's a bunch of stuff on the top. Mass of the load, uh, 8. 
times 9.8 times cos 28, close bracket, times 7. Plus mass of the beam, 12 times 9.8 times cos 28, close bracket, times 3.5. Close bracket divided by divided by five point nine. I get one hundred forty three point seven two five nine. Of course, that's not the right answer either. What do they want me to find? Tension perpendicular? Nope. What do they want me to find? Tension. Okay. Um, which trig function? What was the angle? 55? Sine of 55 equals the perpendicular divided by the tension. You know what? I think the tension is going to be the perpendicular divided by the sine of 55, and I just happen to have the perpendicular still stored on my calculator, divided by the sine of 55. 175 point, oh, I guess sig figs now, 175 newtons. Consider the beam below, it says. What will be the direction of the vertical component of the hinge force, Fy? Fy is up, as in diagram 1. Fy is down, as in diagram 2. Fy could be up or down. Ryan says what? Hey, convince me. Even if we went max case scenario, best case scenario, and instead of having the tension at an angle, we had it straight up. Could it be an equilibrium, or would there have to be a force lifting up? So imagine if you had the tension going like this and you removed the wall. What would happen to this thing? It would drop. Uh, it would accelerate. It would not be an equilibrium, which means there has to be a force pushing up right there. Got to be. The only way that you could do this would be to find the center of mass for the beam combined with that. You could hang the string at a magic point right there and get perfect balance. You can hang a string from something from a beam and you can find the magic spot and it'll balance. That's what those baby mobiles do all the time that they put in cribs where they have the things hanging on the on the beam and the kids can, you know, play with them or whatever. Those are all carefully balanced out. Can be done, but yeah, that's that. What would I do for my answer? Probably a free body diagram, and then show that the forces up couldn't equal the forces down unless you had it going Fy to the up. Torques. <gasps> a seesaw. Number one. Number two, number three, four, one, two, and three, one, two, three, and four. Uh, oh, I was going to say no angles. Actually, I lied. Now, two does have an angle. I think the rest, everything is nice and perpendicular. Five, six, except for number six, I'm going to cross out the force from the hinge. Seven. Holy, relax. It looks far uglier than it is. 
By the way, what mechanical device is that a physics stick figure diagram of? Crane. That's, that's, that's how the cranes have to have their setup. Okay, so it's actually very useful and applicable. Um, how about eight this one and eight this one? Okay. So there is some torques. We looked last day, I believe we saw the uh, gentleman from Stanley Park, yes? Okay, what have I got for you this time? Have to stop my video first. <laughs> 